Hi, this is Dr. Mike Hodish. I'm going to show you the best way to brush your teeth. Most people don't know that the most important part to brush is right here where I'm pointing, right at the gum line, and actually down inside the gum a little bit. Where you see the edge of the gum, right here, and in your own mouth when you look in the mirror, the gum is actually not attached to the tooth right there. It's an elastic cuff like your sock around your ankle. You can stick something down inside that cuff, two or three or even four millimeters, before it hits bottom. And plaque grows down inside there, and it's very important to clean that out every day. Plaque in that area is very, very uh, closely in contact with the gum tissue, and so is most effective at creating gum inflammation, which leads to tooth loss. It's also a risk factor for a number of diseases of the entire body, including cardiovascular disease, so you definitely want to control it. The best way to go after that is with a soft toothbrush. Many people think that a hard brush would clean better, but in fact that's not true. Plaque is a soft film about the consistency of toothpaste, and so you don't need a wire brush to scrub it off. Conversely, the hard material that I'm scraping off your teeth when I clean them for you is calculus or tartar, and you know how hard I have to work on that even with a hardened steel instrument, so you're not going to dislodge that no matter what kind of toothbrush you use. Take your soft, your soft toothbrush and inspect it each day. Look at it from the end. Make sure that the bristles are still straight and parallel. If it's starting to spread by more than about 10 degrees, that's when it's time to replace it. Notice I didn't say replace it every week or every month or every three months or six months. It's not a matter of time. It's a matter of condition. Once the brush tends to, tends to spread out, it won't work as well, so you've got to replace it at that point. There's no particular advantage to any of the fancy brushes that have little rubber fingers on them or any of that. Um, there is an advantage to electric, electric toothbrushes, particularly if you don't have the dexterity in your hand to work a manual one effectively. Um, I see plenty of people who can clean their teeth perfectly with a, with a manual brush, but if you have any impairment at all, uh, or if you're just clumsy or arthritic, an electric one is good. I like the Sonicare very much. Uh, Talk to me about it for more advice about what you might want if an electric one is, is something that you need. Whether it's electric or manual, position is the most important thing. And with an electric one, just pretend that its batteries are dead. I still want you to brush with the motion that I'm going to show you, uh, and superimposed on this will be the rotation or vibration of your toothbrush. You want to take the brush and lay it so it's right across the gum line. I'm going to move the camera in a little closer so you can really see here. I'm putting the, the brush so it's half on the tooth, half on the gum. And before I start scrubbing, I'm going to roll the brush down so it's pointed into the gum at a 45 degree angle. Let me turn the camera here and try and make it so you can see this again. It's kind of hard to get that close. So there, that shows it nicely. So I'm over the gum line, pointed down into the gum at a 45 degree angle. Now I want to put a pretty firm pressure on it, which I'm doing now. You can see how the bristles deform and also on this side. So we've got the bristles pushed uh, right in between the teeth and also flexing so that they go down inside the gum. Now the motion is a short stroke, only about three-eighths of an inch back and forth, ten strokes in each place, and then advance around, always overlapping at least one tooth. Now, I'm not actually counting out 10 strokes here, but I expect you to. And just keep on going. At some point, you've got to flip the brush over, of course, and then you go. Go on. Now, on the inside, the exact same principles, half on the tooth, half on the gum. 10 strokes, 10 strokes. Across the front, you want to go sideways. Now, the mouth is rather narrow here, so that's a little difficult, but do not do this. Now that you understand about the anatomy of the cuff, you can see that you've got to go sideways even if it's a little crowded here. And then you continue on around. On the top, it's exactly the same, except you're pointed up to get into the upper gum. And that's all there is to it. Now, when you start doing this, you're going to find that you're touching some areas that you'd been missing before. They'll be a little bit inflamed, and the main symptom of that is that they'll bleed easily when you touch them with your brush or your floss. When you find bleeding, don't think that you're injuring yourself by brushing. It just means that you need to do it a little more there. It wasn't clean enough yesterday. 
So go to town on it, and after several days of cleaning thoroughly, you'll find it doesn't bleed anymore, and that's a state of health. Then you have to keep doing it that way every day to keep it. It doesn't get healthy and stay healthy, but the good news is it gets healthy quickly. Unfortunately, it gets sick again quickly, too, if you slack off, so you need to stay with it. Thank you. In our next lesson, we'll talk about flossing.